All right, so I want to talk a little bit about solutions and how we prepare solutions and some of the things we define for a solution. So I'm going to give three examples here. Of uh, One is adding sodium chloride into water. Another is adding silver chloride into water. Another adding sugar into water. And so we want to see for each of three of these, how may they look similar and how may they look different. And our goal here is to define a couple things. The solute and the solvent and the solution. So our solute is typically what we would say is the minor component. And usually we say what is being dissolved. So for example, as I add sodium chloride into uh, water here, we would see sodium chloride is the solute. It's the thing being dissolved into the solvent. Uh, our solvent is the major component or simply what is causing something to be dissolved. And then the solution is the combination of the solute and solvent to make a homo homogeneous or homogeneous mixture. So these things are combining, they're making this mixture uh, that by homogeneous it's uniform throughout. So let's look for example as we add each of these three things into water. So if we add sodium chloride into water, sodium chloride is an ionic compound that is soluble in water. And by soluble, what it means, it has the ability to dissolve in water. So this ionic compound, as we drop it in water, uh, we notice that it has two components of it, a positive and a negative ion. That is going to break up into a bunch of sodium and chloride ions. And they uh, not only dissolve, but they dissociate. And the way that we express this is by saying we have solid sodium chloride producing sodium ions and chloride ions. Now, how are we going to show that they've been dissolved in water? Instead of writing a physical state of a solid, liquid, or a gas, we put this aqueous AQ physical state. And what that tells us is that that substance is dissolved in water. And so we can call this reaction a dissolution reaction. It's basically something where it's been dissolved into water. <clears throat> now we go to our next example, silver chloride. Again, an ionic compound. But different here is that this is insoluble, which means it cannot dissolve in water. And so if I were to add this, it'd be like adding a rock into water. That silver chloride is just going to stay as a solid altogether as silver chloride. So it's not actually going to dissolve. So how would we express this? Well, we would say silver chloride. And we add it into water. And we could say, well, no reaction's happening. Nothing's happening. No change is occurring. I've tried to dissolve it into water, it does not dissolve into water, and that is because it's insoluble. <clears throat> now we go to our third example here, we have our sugar molecule. That sugar molecule is a molecular compound, right? and we can observe that by the fact that it is made up of all nonmetals. So when I add that sugar molecule, it's not going to break up into carbon, hydrogen, oxygen ions because it's not made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen ions. It's made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, all covalently bonded. So that means it will stay together as a bunch of sugar molecules. So they're in, distinguished uh, by the fact that we've gone from this solid to these aqueous dissolved sugar molecules. And again, we can express that by starting with our solid compound, we add it into water and to express that it is now dissolved, we would say it is in the aqueous physical state. 
So now again, hopefully we can see what we mean by solute, solvent in our solution. So our solvent in each of these was water, and then our solute was different, the thing being dissolved, and our solution would be all of that together. So that's kind of a qualitative description of solutions, being able to describe what's being dissolved and what is causing something to be dissolved. Our quantitative description is where now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the fact that we're going to see how does that relate to concentration. So concentration is various units that are used, um, simply a ratio of solute to solvent or the total solution. So some of those examples uh, are molarity, capital M is our shorthand. So that would be moles of the solute per liter of solution. So for example, if we go back to our original sodium chloride solution here, maybe we would define that solution by saying, well, maybe this is 2.5 molarity sodium chloride. So note we add a tag in describing what the solute is. The solute, we're not describing the solvent, we're describing the solute. So 2.5 molarity sodium chloride tells us that it's 2.5 moles of sodium chloride for every liter of solution that we have for that specific solution. Okay, so that's an example of molarity. <clears throat> Some of the other units that we typically use uh, are also mass percent. And we usually, we're gonna talk about this as mass percent either by volume or by mass. And what we mean by that, if it's by volume, we're gonna say it's percent mass or weight divided by volume. And that is um, the mass of our solute per millilitre, milliliter, excuse me, of solvent. And then we go ahead and make it a percentage. So for example, if we look back at our solution up here, maybe our sucrose solution, we would describe that sucrose solution as maybe something that's 2.3% weight volume. And what that means is we're gonna have 2.3 grams of, oh, sorry, we just gotta put a tag here to say describing what the solvent is, the solute, 2.3 grams of our sugar for every 100 milliliters of solution here. And that would give us a percentage there. <clears throat> we also use what, what we're dealing with mass percent, then also by mass or percent mass, mass or weight, weight, and that would be the mass of the solute divided by, uh, sorry, I forgot to say here, these are in grams, divided by the total mass of the solution in grams, and again, times 100%. And so again, maybe if we look down at this solution, that may say, depending on what our density is, maybe that's something like 1.9 grams of our solution, or excuse me, our solute, per 100 milliliters of solution, we would say is 1.9% weight, weight of our solute. So we notice that we have the ability to describe these solutions um, by the concentrations, like how concentrated they are, and we also have the ability to qualitatively describe them based upon what our solute looks like. So are these things dissolving? Are they dissociating? Are they simply just dissolving? Or are they not dissolving? And that gives us the ability to identify what is in solution. Is it just going to be ions? Is it going to be molecules? Or are we not really going to have anything in solution because we have something that is insoluble and it's not going to want to dissolve? And so in class, we're going to look at how does this relate to... Um, what our chemical formula is and telling us something about our, ion our ions present in solution, as well as the relative concentrations that we would see uh, for each of those. The last thing I want to mention is that each of these here give us the ability to look at basically a conversion factor between two different units. So for example, uh, our molarity is a conversion factor between moles of solute and liters of solution. 
just like our mass percent is a conversion factor between the mass of the solute and the milliliters of our solution. And likewise, down here, we also see that this would be a conversion factor between the mass of the solute and the mass of the solution. And so we, each of these give us the ability to look at something maybe that we would record for a solution. We would probably maybe record the volume of a solution. And that would tell us how much of our solute we have present in that specific volume, whether it's a mass or it's a number of moles. And we're going to connect this to, uh, in class, looking at reactions and how we can utilize the fact that we know a concentration as a conversion factor between moles of what we may be reacting, which is our solute, uh, between two different solutions.